Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Nina and welcome or welcome back to the 12 days of Wellness Miss. Today specifically is day four and we are going to be talking about the moon, as you probably already know. So this channel is mainly about astrology and spirituality, but in the 12 days of Wellness Miss, I'm obviously focusing on wellness and self-care and kind of getting yourself pampered and refreshed and ready for the new year. And I wanted to talk about the moon and get into all of the beauty and symbolism behind the moon and her phases in one of these videos because the moon has correlations with the female body, with emotions in general, and with setting intentions and realizing manifestations. And I feel like all of these things, getting more in touch with our body and our emotions and working to manifest things in this spiritual new age kind of way are all really in line with this energy of new year, getting ourselves together, doing real self-care and self-nurturing. So that's why I want to make this video for day four of Wellness Miss. Now, I usually don't script any of my videos, but this video is going to be somewhat scripted. I have a lot of notes written down because there is so much information that I want to get into. So hopefully, that works out. Maybe I'll change the way of doing my videos, but I do tend to, you know, go off and ramble and get off track. So hopefully the script works out for me. <laughs> this video will go in chapters of each moon phase and its associations with the female hormonal cycle. So yes, we are going to be talking about the menstrual cycle. We're going to be talking about female bodies and hopefully that will allow you, if you are someone who menstruates, to get more in touch with your hormonal cycles, with your body, with your emotions, allow yourself to honor your body a bit more in relationship to what is going through throughout each week of the month. If you don't menstruate, hopefully you'll still get some great information out of it, but we're also going to be talking about the correlations between the moon phases and the phases of setting intentions and realizing manifestations and goals. Before we get into that in relationship to each phase of the moon, let's go over some brief information about the moon so that we can use those details to garner some symbolism. So the moon is one of the Earth's luminaries and it is Earth's source of light during the night as it reflects the light of the sun. And because the moon reflects the light from the sun, it appears to have different phases of fullness throughout the month, depending on its positional relationship to the sun. And also the moon influences the tides. These are really important things to keep note as we dive into the symbolism. So symbolism, synchronicity, synastry between the moon and a female's hormonal cycle. There's a lot to be said scientifically on whether women's cycles can or do sync up with the lunar cycles. There's a lot of data collected to kind of disprove this new age philosophy that the moon and women are connected by way of the lunar cycles and a female's hormonal cycles. But there's a lot to be said about this data, about interference of light affecting our relationship with the moon. And at the end of the day, there are some undeniable correlations between the lunar cycles and the female hormonal cycles. So do with that information what you will. But the moon takes 28 days to move through its eight phases, which is also the standard amount of time it takes for a female to complete a menstrual cycle, although it is not as exact as the lunar cycles. The moon also affects the tides, like I said, and poetically and astrologically, there is a huge correlation between water and emotions. So the fact that the moon 
literally affects water, affects a facet of the ocean, can be poetically interpreted as the moon or a female's hormones throughout the month influencing emotions. In addition to that, with the moon representing femininity and the sun representing masculinity, there's a correlation to be drawn between phases of the moon in which the moon is reflecting the most light from the sun being associated with phases in the female hormonal cycle in which levels of testosterone are elevated and testosterone is a hormone that is more dominant in the male sex. So that's just some interesting stuff for you to chew on. And then as far as the relationship between the moon and her phases and how to align it with your intentions and realizations of goals, where does this correlation come from? Well, the reason why it is so important to bring up the correlation between the moon and a female's hormonal cycles is that this correlation is actually what informs the correlation between the moon's phases and setting goals and intentions in alignment with the phases of the moon. And this is because obviously the female body is responsible for delivering life and that is a product of what goes on during the female hormonal cycle in large part you know there's a little bit of help with the men too <laughs> and so it's this relationship between the moon correlating to the female body and how that produces life and aligning the process of birthing an idea or a goal with those phases of the moon I hope that makes sense, but now let's get into the symbolism and correlations between these things and each phase of the moon. Starting with the new moon, and I have my numerology oracle deck from Yasmin Boland to have a little visual representation of each phase of the moon. The artwork is so gorgeous that I just had to include it. So yes, the new moon. Because the moon is cyclical, it can be argued that there's really no beginning or end, but the new moon does denote the beginning of a new cycle. Even though it is a cycle, a circle, there's really no beginning or end. During the new moon, the sun and the moon are in the same position in the sky, or in the language of astrology, they are conjunct. And therefore, the moon is actually not visible in the sky because it is not in a position to be reflecting any light from the sun. This also brings on the spring tide or the high tide. The new moon only takes up one day in the entirety of the lunar cycle. So for the rest of the first week of the lunar cycle, the moon is in the waxing crescent phase. In the first week of the lunar cycle after the new moon, the moon's relationship to the sun begins to shift and therefore it begins to reflect more and more light from the sun. And as a result, the tide also begins to slowly lower until it reaches the neap tide or the low tide at the first quarter moon. So in the menstrual cycle, the beginning of a new cycle is marked by the first day of menstruation. And this stage and this first week of the menstrual cycle is correlated to that week of the new moon and the waxing crescent. The beginning of the menstrual cycle is correlated to the new moon because it is the most introverted, most feminine, most even antisocial part of both the female hormonal cycle and the lunar cycle because the moon is not reflecting any light from the sun. So it is an entirely feminine energy with no masculine influence. On top of that, the tide is high at the new moon. And we all know that around the beginning of the female hormonal cycle, emotions are running high as well. As menstruation continues, the pituitary gland starts to produce a hormone called FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone. 
very creative. This hormone is what stimulates the ovaries to begin to produce a new egg. Emotionally, menstruation is perceived as the most sensitizing part of the hormonal cycle, but in actuality, it can actually be somewhat of an emotional relief and create more of a sense of peace, even though it is a bit more antisocial and internal and reflective. Because after the PMS phase, and once menstruation actually begins, estrogen starts to slowly rise. And progesterone starts to fall. And progesterone is that hormone that is responsible for that PMS phase. So in the first week of the female hormonal cycle, we begin to feel a greater sense of stability and logic and energy slowly begin to build up just as the waxing crescent moon slowly begins to absorb more and more light from the sun. With the new moon symbolizing the beginning of a new cycle, it represents a time in our lives that we have completely shed the old and we are making room for the new and setting new intentions. With the new moon being the face of the moon, that she is receiving the least amount of light from the sun, it also symbolizes a point in which we are more capable of looking inward and listening to our own intuition and really getting in touch with our true hopes and dreams. And we're able to believe wholeheartedly in ourselves without our fearfully logical side infringing on our purest intentions. This is why it's encouraged to set your intentions on the new moon. And then as the waxing crescent progresses in the lunar cycle, we begin to act practically and grow our intentions with our actions. As we begin to introduce more real world practical actions, it is symbolic of that waxing crescent building and reflecting more light from the sun. Like this point in the menstrual cycle, it's almost like we're experiencing the metaphysical equivalent of the follicle stimulating hormone, a goal stimulating hormone, if you will. As we grow towards success, just like the female body begins to grow and produce an egg. So tips for this week is to take this week of the moon cycle or your own hormonal cycle to look inwardly, assess your dreams, your true desires, and slowly take steps to build momentum towards your biggest goal of the month. In this next week of the lunar cycle, we go through the first quarter moon and the waxing gibbous. The first quarter moon is a striking and significant point in the lunar cycle because it is showing an equal amount of light and darkness on the surface of the moon. There is as much of the moon's natural intuitive nature as there is logic and rationality being reflected from the light of the sun. At this point, the tides have also reached their first low point of the month, the low tide, the neap tide, which can represent emotions also being a bit more in check. Though emotions may be more muted with the light of the sun influencing the surface of the moon, astrologically, during the first quarter moon, the sun and the moon are squaring, creating arguably the most unharmonious aspect that you can have. This can represent a real time of crisis or indecision or inability to satisfy both parts of ourself, our intuitive self and our logical self, because they are in such a deadlock. However, the first quarter moon is only active for one day of the lunar cycle. And for the rest of the week, we are experiencing the waxing gibbous. With more light from the sun influencing the apparent shape of the moon, the tide begins to rise, as does 
energy and overall vitality. We are less promoted to look inward and more promoted to make use of our rising energy levels. These two phases of the moon are associated with the second half of the pre-ovulation phase of the female hormonal cycle. That is the phase between menstruation and ovulation. During this time, estrogen begins to rise as does FSH and LH, which is the luteinizing hormone, which is responsible for triggering ovulation. As these hormone levels steadily begin to rise, so do energy levels and even sex drive. The first quarter moon specifically speaks to the point in the cycle where menstruation officially ends. And we go back to actively participating in society and have less of an opportunity to look inward. At least if you're like me and you take this point in your cycle as a spiritual excuse to be a total self-care oriented recluse. In relationship to setting our goals and intentions, the first quarter moon represents that moment that we are confronted with our purest dreams and intentions in a practical light, where our desires and our reality really meet at a deadlock, just like the light and the dark side of the moon. With this phase of the moon, we can fully confront our shadow side logically and bring our subconscious to light more. As we move into the waxing gibbous phase, we learn how to cope with our shadow side, our subconscious, our dreams and intentions more practically with more motivation to make our dreams of reality after hitting potentially a brief sort of crisis with the first quarter moon. Tips for this week of the lunar phase is to take this opportunity of equal focus of light and shadow to make yourself more consciously aware of your own shadow side. Then we come into the full moon Phase. The full moon is when the sun and the moon are directly across from each other and therefore the moon is able to reflect the light of the sun across the entirety of her surface. The tide is high once more which rises energy and emotional levels for better or for worse and astrologically this forms the aspect of an opposition between the sun and the moon meaning that we are met with equally strong polar energies which can provide us with the ultimate logical and intuitive clarity if we are able to truly balance them. The full moon is associated with ovulation in a female's hormonal cycle. The fruition of the body's goal during the month to make and release an egg that is ripe for fertilization. For the purposes of creating new life, this is the point in the female's hormonal phase in which the male and female sexual organs are meant to meet, which is actually kind of beautifully poetic with the fact that in the full moon phase, the moon is absorbing the entirety of the sun's light. Now in terms to how the full moon correlates to setting goals and intentions, this is the point in the lunar cycle that your goal is meant to hit the peak opportunity for fruition. It is the most opportune time for conceiving success, if you will. And if you can't make the most of this opportunity for this month, then try again next month. For example, this is actually a little anecdotal story of mine that I didn't actually think that I was going to include, but I met my current boyfriend on the full moon when on the new moon I was sort of trying to manifest the love of my life and by meeting him on the full moon I was meeting him at the moment in the lunar cycle that was most opportune for the fruition of my goal or intention. So a lot of times people think that the full moon is when your intention is going to manifest itself, like it's going to happen, and that 
can be true depending on your intention, but really it's just the point in the month that it is most opportune for you to fulfill and conceive your goal. Something like love is something that builds and grows, but that <laughs> full moon phase is when you're most likely to be able to conceive it. It's, it's like a baby. It's just like a baby, really. Next phases in the lunar cycle are the waning gibbous and the third quarter moon or last quarter moon. With the waning gibbous, the sun and the moon move in such a position and relationship to each other that the moon begins to reflect less and less light from the sun. Subsequently, the tides begin to fall and naturally, after that big climax of the full moon, our energies begin to simmer as well. Then with the third quarter moon, yet again, we are at this deadlock of equal light and darkness. Only this time, it comes after the gradual cool down instead of the momentous buildup to the first quarter moon. After spending the waxing gibbous and the full moon period acting more out of our masculine side and making use of our energy and our vitality, as we reach the third quarter moon, our female and intuitive side begins to slowly take over until it reaches the third quarter moon at an absolute crossroads between our feminine, intuitive, masculine, logical. And then again, astrologically, at this point, the sun and moon are forming a square, which is an aspect in which we feel like we can't act out of one side of ourselves without disappointing the other side of ourselves because both of these sides hold the same amount of influence and importance and they are so opposite that it's hard to act out of both and satisfy both at the same time. In this case, our soft, intuitive feminine and our energetic, logical, rational masculine. In the hormonal cycle, now we embark on the second half of the menstrual cycle, the post-ovulation phase, or the luteal phase, where estrogen, FSH, and LH, which all climaxed on ovulation, now begin to fall. FSH and LH, more abruptly so, with estrogen sort of taking a dip at first. In compensation, the progesterone hormone begins to climb up. Energy and sex drive begin to decrease at this point as the body is no longer motivated to fertilize this egg. And that rising progesterone may start to bring on those PMS symptoms. Or in the case that the egg was fertilized, those early pregnancy symptoms, they actually are pretty similar, including sore breasts, nauseousness, low energy, and even light spotting. Progesterone actually peaks at exactly the halfway point in this second phase of the menstrual cycle, which is the point associated with the third quarter moon and the point in which your PMS symptoms are probably at their highest. Now, with your goals and intentions at this point in the lunar cycle, the correlation depends on how successful you were in the fertilization of your goal. After a successful fertilization of your goal, this is the point to take some time, pat yourself on the back, relax, reflect on what your next steps might be, while still, you know, taking time to <laughs> relax after the climactic point of the month, which was the full moon. Maybe it's a point where finally you can breathe more easily because you successfully came across a certain level of manifestation of your goal. However, if your goal at this point was not successfully fertilized, <laughs> really running with this analogy, this would be the point in the lunar phase where the disappointment really kicks in and you begin to 
lick your wounds before you pick yourself back up for the new moon. Tips for this point in the lunar cycle is to take time to cool down and unwind slowly after the intense climax of the full moon. And lastly, let's talk about the final phase before the new moon starts up again, the waning crescent. So this phase comes after the deadlock of the last quarter moon, the third quarter moon, and it is when the sun and moon begin to move in such a position that the moon gradually begins to reflect less and less light from the sun. With less and less light from the sun, the prevailing energy is more and more internal, reflective, emotional, archetypically feminine, and subsequently, the tides begin to rise again before they hit their all-time high or first all-time high at the new moon. In this point in the hormonal phase, after estrogen made a little bit of a comeback, peaking just a little bit more after its little dip post-ovulation, it begins to drop back down for good at this point until the start of the next cycle. And though the physical effects of PMS have hit their climax already with progesterone already having peaked, progesterone is still the dominant hormone in this phase until the beginning of a new cycle, which means that you're still in that PMS phase and you can really start getting some serious PMS brain, which if you've experienced PMS brain, either first-hand or second-hand, you'll know that it is the most illogical, emotionally driven version of your brain. And though certainly there are some definite downsides to experiencing this illogical PMS brain living in a logic-dominated, male-dominated society, the benefits of this point in the cycle is that the veil really is lifted between the seen and the unseen and you're more capable of picking up on intuitive hits and acting out of your gut feelings. This can be one of the most powerfully psychic experiences a female can have, or at least it gives the best chance of psychic abilities at this time. So cut yourself some slack for being a little less in touch with the logical side. Now in relationship to our goals and intentions during this phase of the moon, this is the point in the cycle that as we slowly start to slip back into our more intuitive, internal side of ourselves, it's the best time for us to reevaluate our true heart's desire before we restart our lunar cycle and set new intentions. The phrase on this card in the Moonology deck is, what do you need to release? So since the new moon is all about starting fresh, starting new and setting new intentions, this point in the lunar cycle is about what do you need to release? What is no longer serving you so that you can start fresh with the new moon? Tips for this point in the lunar cycle is to take this time to be more receptive. Acknowledge winks from the universe as the veil is more lifted between the seen and the unseen, the explainable and the coincidental, and let these intuitive hits inform how you go about the next phase of your next cycle of intention setting. And with that, those are all of the phases of the moon and how they correlate with a female's hormonal cycle and with how we can go about setting and fulfilling our intentions. If you want to know more about how the moon relates to femininity, then I definitely recommend that you watch my video on masculinity and femininity in astrology. But I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you do. Let me know if you have any further insights into the moon and how it relates poetically to these things that I brought up and other correlations between the moon and her phases and other things in life and nature. But I hope that you have a great rest of your day or night, 
and I hope to see you tomorrow for day five of Wellness Miss. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.